All right, so look, for the people who don't get it, it's real simple, okay? This is what I'm talking about when I say I'm not buying the media version, okay? Or the crump-a-dump version, whatever you want to call it. It's not about Trayvon necessarily or personally or anything like that. It's about the image and the story we've been sold. That's what I'm talking about, right? I'm not talking about either one of these two people personally or anything like that. Try to understand that. This is why I'm not buying that version of the story. It's real simple. As far as we know, Trayvon enters through the northwest corner. That's the only thing we have, and it comes from Serino's words that what George more likely said, right? There's no evidence of that. We don't know for sure. That's true. We don't know. But Trayvon enters more than likely through this area. Could be this area too. Trayvon enters there. And is going to run at some point. He's going to run to this mailbox area here. So the logical path would be that he's going down Retreat View Circle. George sees this all happening, right? His words. Believe it or not. Uh, he sees that happening, and at some point, Trayvon's going to run to there. That's what Dee Dee says, right? So he runs, and he loses connection with Dee Dee. He runs to that mailbox on him. In between those trees, there's behind the mailbox, or behind the uh, clubhouse, where the mailboxes are. Right? And George is watching that and drives down that. So when I hear this stuff about, well, I hear, I'm hearing the, the stalky, creepy, uh, TSA mentality, bully, racist guy that's following stalking Trayvon throughout the neighborhood is this what you're talking about because if we listen to Dee, Dee the first thing she says about George the first time she says that Trayvon says anything about George what does he say he says he believes this man is watching him or this guy is watching or whatever she says right? watching him well what does that mean what are we to take that to mean is he aware that George is following him that like is he aware that he that He's driving behind him, gun in hand, ready to blow at any minute. Right? Is he aware of that? Well, he doesn't. He doesn't seem to give Dee Dee any indication that that's the case. So we don't know. It's a mystery. Right. So if you look at the East Pool tape, which is over here, pointing in this direction, and it point it literally has a wide angle lens like this far. That's how wide angle that is. Right, you can see when it starts raining, and you can probably even see George at some point drive down here and drive down here and turns around. Where he parks, we don't know. But the first thing that Dee Dee says, that Trayvon says, is that this guy's watching him. So who knows what that means? George could be just sitting down here parked. But the thing is, is what I tried to explain before, you're looking at a residential area here, right, folks? You can see cars are parked on the street. You can watch video from this street in particular, and you can see cars are parked down that street. It's 7 o'clock on a Sunday evening. Uh, it's not unusual for people to drive down this road. Now, I could see if this was an abandoned street somewhere and not a car around for miles, and a car pulls down here and parks down the street and is sitting there on the other end of the road here somewhere and you're over here yeah I might get a little creeped out too but if I'm sitting on the corner of my house right now where there's like a four way stop and somebody dies down the street I'm not even going to think twice about it because people drive down that street all the time and it was in this little residential area that I live in that has less people than this living in it <laughs> And so if someone parks down the street, I'm certainly not going to think of that either, that that has anything to do with me. It's not even going to... And I think, uh, who was it? Romney says it depends on the vibe I get. <laughs> well, so what happened? What, George drove by here and flashed his gun, flashed his knife, flicked, flipped him off, gave him the evil racist look. We all know what that looks like. Oh, my God, there's a black guy in my neighborhood, right? We all know what that look looks like. Creepy look, right? And, <laughs> say, but but George doesn't. I mean, Trayvon doesn't say anything like that. He just says he thinks this guy is watching him. So what am I to make of that? Well, if I look at the media version, he's a 12-year-old little boy, all innocent and cute, and plays with his skittles. And again, this is not to disparage Trayvon. It's just what we've been sold, people. Okay, 
And I'm supposed to believe that this kid is terrified of this racist sitting in his truck. That's what I'm supposed to believe. And so when I talk about his actions not making any sense, I'm talking about what is his first action? He walks towards the truck. The worst path he can go, he takes. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, he could walk down to the sidewalk to his home. It's over here. He could walk down there. That would be better. He could walk out the gate. He can walk back towards the 7-Eleven. He can walk to somebody's home. He can call 911. He can do so many. He's got so many options out around here, and he takes the worst option anyone could take if you're worried that somebody's sitting in their truck over here watching you. <laughs> That's why I'm not buying the bullshit, folks. It doesn't take a genius to figure it out. Right? So, whatever the reason is, I, I, I don't know. You can, I, like I said, well, so what? You're not, you don't buy the weed thing because he didn't have it on. Fine. Whatever. Don't buy that one. I don't care. But I ain't buying this one either. <laughs> okay? So that's his first action. But before he gets, starts walking, Dee Dee says they get disconnected. At some point, they reconnect again. And that could be anywhere. Uh, we just assume we don't know. No hard, re- no hard evidence, but it could be anywhere. Who knows? In this general area. But by all indications given in the phone call, he's going to run home. He says he's going to run from the back because it's easier. She says, "Run to your dad's house." Uh, did I say? Yeah, they get reconnected when he's in this area. Past when he's past George now. She says, "Run to your father's house." He says he's going to uh, repeat. Like I'm going to run from the back. So all the indications are he's not going to try to run around the neighborhood and lose George. He's not going to hide. He doesn't say, oh, "I'm going to." Well, I'm going to run over here and hide so he doesn't find me. He doesn't say anything like that. He's going to run from the back because it's easier. And this run is... if Trayvon, I'm sure, can make this in about 20 seconds. I'm sure a lot of... Many adults can who can run well and all that. Run just fine. He can make this run in about 20 seconds. From here, this general area, to here. 20 seconds. And somehow, two to four minutes passed. And Trayvon's not inside his house. But... It's just, it's just a mystery. We don't know. No hard evidence, but he doesn't make it there. He had, could have made it in 20 seconds. Could have made it by the time George, what we assume, made it to the T in the sidewalk here. Trayvon could have made it home before he even made it that far. But we don't know which way Trayvon ran. We don't know. We know he's going to run from the back, so it doesn't make sense that he's going to run out to Retreat View Circle and run down to the, uh, the front. But it... Before I get too far into that, I might not even go much further. Well, I'll, I'll go a little further into that because that's... So his second action, right? His second action was to run. He's really creeped out. People said, uh, she says, oh, he looks creepy. Creepy, yes. And so now he's really creeped out. People said, well, he, what, what, what could have George done? Could he have flashed his gun then? Well, I would assume that Trayvon would mention that. Wouldn't that be a good assumption? Holy shit, D.D., he's got a gun. He's got a gun. Mm-hmm. Does she mention that? No, she doesn't mention that. Well, anyways, doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but we don't know. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. We don't know. He's flashing a knife. Did he flip him off? Who knows? He, all we know is is he creepy. So he runs. We don't know which way he runs, but for some reason, he doesn't actually go home. And we don't know where he ends up. All we know is that he tells Dee Dee that he sees George behind him again. Which, uh, what does that mean? He's behind him again, we don't know, right? There's no hard evidence, we don't know. Uh, He's behind him again and he can see him. But does he actually see George or does he see something like a flashlight? We don't know. So... This is his third action that doesn't make any sense to me. He says he's right by his dad's house. Now, that's kind of ambiguous, right? What does that mean? Right by his father's house. Well, I mean, if you're on foot, right? if you're driving, let's say you're driving to this here, and you're driving down here, and you're talking to the person that's there, you'd say, well, I'm right by the house. That would kind of make sense. But if you're walking... I mean, if you're walking, let's say you're walking here, you're by this clubhouse, would you say you're right by your father's house if you're over there, right? And you'd say, I'm, I'm by the clubhouse, or I'm a, what, I'm a few houses away, I'm down the street a little bit. I mean, he says he's right by his father's house when he sees George behind him. 
at some distance we don't know what that means but somehow this 12 year old creeped out from the racist all scary TSA mentality all that bullshit right? somehow Trayvon's not going to run he's not going to go in his dad's house he's not going to call 911 he's not going to do anything he's going to talk to George or he's going to say some words to George Trayvon's going to be the first one to speak by the way if you notice he's going to be the first one to say something why are you following me for? Now, how is he saying that? We don't know. We could say, oh, why are you following me for? Why are you following me for? Uh, we could say it in lots of different ways. We don't know, right? What you following me for? <laughs> Cracker? <laughs> I just, right? I, or, hey, why, why are you following me? Yeah, right. You could be scared. It could be either way. Uh, yeah, so, but where does that, that's his, that's his third action. That just doesn't make any sense to me. So all those three actions, going up to the truck, running, which would take 20 seconds, but apparently two to four minutes is not enough to run from here to there. And then that's the second action. And then the third action, going up to George and saying something. That's why I don't buy the media crump dump version of the scared little boy of the... Uh, the overzealous, rent a cop, wannabe cop, just can't wait to get him, hunter, killer, racist, TSA mentality, chase, pursue, hunt him down, all the bullshit we've heard. When does that happen? 